can ask you to introduce yourself, Professor. Yes. Who are you? <laughs> Who am I? Well, I? My name is Dr. Olive Young, mm -hmm. and I've been at the University of Alberta for oh, well over 30 years. Oh. And um, the reason that you are interviewing me about the cannabis course is because I developed the cannabis course um, and the loneliness course, and someone else developed a joy and happiness course, and we're developing a resiliency course. And these are all interdisciplinary courses, and we've started a continuing professional education unit, and these courses are part of that unit. Mm -hmm. And we're working toward a certificate, a certificate in emotions, uh, called um, maybe emotional agility or something like that. Is there like a specific reason why you chose to do a course on cannabis oh. and like specifically do it in a university to young people? Yes, thank you. So I, I believe you never do anything alone. You, you always have a team around you. Mm -hmm. uh, and I also believe that um, as leaders, we need to have um, good advisors, good advice. And so I started a group, an open group, to say and ask them, what kind of courses do you think we should be having. And one of the people in, the, uh, in that group said, we definitely need a course in cannabis. And at that time, it was about uh, 218. <laughs> and, you know, and so, I mean, cannabis was just being legalized. Right in the middle of it. Right in the middle of it. And I thought, yes, <laughs> just like that. <laughs> you know, it was, it, it, you, sometimes you need to reflect you know, should, should we have a course on something? You think, mm, mm, like who would take it? Would it be of interest, all of that? And as soon as she said it, I thought, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> and then I started to read, like read and read and read about cannabis. A lot of research. A lot of research. Now here's the irony with cannabis. Because it was illegal, mm -hmm. um, and still is illegal in, in, for many places many in the world. Many of the world. <laughs> yeah, including the federal system in the United States is mm -hmm. highly illegal. Uh, that, you have to watch that for airports, by the way. Mm -hmm. The federal airports, so you have to be very careful mm -hmm. not to have any cannabis. Thanks on. for the heads up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you're welcome. Um, so um, the research hasn't been great. Mm -hmm. So now, as you know, I'm also teaching a loneliness course. Oh my gosh, the research, so many articles, mm -hmm. but not for cannabis. Uh, it's coming now. Now the research is really flowing. And because of the pandemic, uh, the cannabis use has skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. So much more research as well. There was a lack of uh, funding on cannabis research before legalization, right? Hopefully we can fund it more now. Yes. Okay. Yeah, how do you fund an illegal drug? <laughs> it's really hard. Yeah. 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 I mean, at least like we have a clear like uh, message in Canada now that mm -hmm. it's legalized. But in the U.S. it's like very complicated, right? It is. Mm -hmm. Very um, complicated. On the federal level, it's a Schedule One drug. It is illegal. It's yeah. very... It's labeled as like being highly addictive and like mm -hmm. it has no medicinal value. Oh. Yeah, but in a lot of states, it's very common, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's legal too in like state law. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Colorado is the example, right? Yeah. I mean, every people and I, we had that uh, I don't know, that story in class. I don't know if that still stayed in the Rise Three Hundred and Sixty, but people had to move. They felt to Colorado to get the help they needed. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think we just did that topic. Okay. With like. Uh, Especially with young kids who yes. have like epilepsy. Right? That's exactly right. It, yeah, because yeah. CBD does work for epilepsy. Well, certain epilepsy mm -hmm. uh, uh, types you know, for young kids. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, in simple terms, what is cannabis and what are its common uses? Yeah, it's a plant mm -hmm. uh, that grows in various parts of the world. So it's a d different type of plant depending whether it's growing in California or whether it's in Russia or China or the Middle I East. Know. <laughs> there are a lot of actually various different forms of cannabis. And um, we just really refer to three uh, uh, when we talk about cannabis or cannabis use in our society. Uh, and one is really potent for uh, THC, mm -hmm. sativa. The other one is more potent for CBD. And the other one um, has what well, kind of a mix to it, but there, but the growers before it was legal, the growers were grafting and trying to, uh, all sorts of ways of trying different plants mm -hmm. and to see with different properties. And one of the big concerns was when it was legalized, will all that knowledge the illegal growers have, would that be transferred to the government system? Because in Canada, it's the government that ensures that our cannabis supply 
is, is not contaminated or full of pesticides. Mm -hmm. they, they, the regulations, they make, right? Pardon? The regulations. Right? The regulations. That's what they. What, that's what. That's where it is. And then, of course, the, we have provincial regulations, mm -hmm. and then we sometimes you have municipal regulations. Mm -hmm. So, but the government makes sure it is it's a it's clean supply. Mm -hmm. Mind you, the growers that were were illegal, and, and there's still some that are illegal. Still, <laughs> yeah, quite a few. <laughs> a few. Uh, yeah, they don't worry. worry. <laughs> no, they, they don't worry about that. Okay. Mm -hmm. But their users, the people they they supply, believe in them, right? Mm -hmm. And I think the, um, I would say most of the illegal growers probably have a very good product. Otherwise, you don't have customers, right? Yeah. But they're also highly uh, innovative, mm -hmm. these growers. Yeah. Okay, so um, can you tell us in simple terms how cannabis chemically affects the body? How uh -huh. does it, you know, how do we take it? What effect does it cause in our body? Like what happens? Inside. Inside. In our body, <laughs> yes, and I, and I like the way how we take it because how we take it affects us differently. Oh. Whether we have edibles or whether we smoke it or whether we vape it or we have a patch, mm -hmm. um, so it has a different effect. But the body has endo uh, cannabinoid. <laughs> I'm saying can cannabinoid. I've just edited that one out. <laughs> receptors. Well, it has. Let me. I'll just say it this way: the body has receptors for cannabinoid. Cannabis. We have them in our body. We have uh, CB1, and it's in our, our brain and central nervous system, and then we have CB2, which is throughout our whole body. And we have lovely graphs that show exactly where the receptors are in our body. Now, someone told me uh, recently that she was doing cannabis and had no effect whatsoever. And she said the person beside her, and it's always a delayed effect, well, depending on how you take it, it can be a delayed effect, right? Yeah. And uh, the person beside her had no effect. And I said, well, maybe you don't have the receptors or the same number of receptors. Um, and she just hadn't even thought about it, why she would not have that effect. So we, because we don't actually think that it, it ha like we have a system to receive, like, like to receive, like, yeah, you know, like we see, I think we have, like, because it is so stigmatized, mm -hmm. we have this, like, notion that cannabis is something that is different and unnatural and yeah, it causes like, weird reactions in the body but it only amplifies the some of the chemicals and the receptors some of the chemicals that go to that receptors that our body already produces right exactly you, you, you got it okay. i think i think that's sometimes kind of surprising to people mm -hmm. that that we actually have our own system yeah and so you can also say well we have this system that helps us already why do we need any more yeah that's also yeah, another, another external source human body is a world of wonders. <laughs> it is. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Totally amazing. Yeah. yeah. And right now we have CBD and THC and or combinations thereof. But there are so many more um, discoveries to be made about cannabis. Like it's about 120, 150. Mm -hmm. We are just we are just at the just here for our cannabis knowledge and what it will do for us or how it can help us. Now that now that we can do research. Okay, so like um, in terms of effects, like what are the physical effects or like consequences of cannabis on our body? Yes, so it depends what you use. Mm -hmm. So THC is known for creativity, high energy, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes hallucinations if you have the wrong um, amount, but it also helps you physically. And so uh, CBD, on the other hand, is more the medical cannabis, mm -hmm. where you insomnia or nausea or it's a physical, well, it'll help you relax. Uh, but then what producers do is combine it. You know, 20% THC, a 5% CBD, and what is the effect on the body? So for you to find out your right um, percentage for your body would take you a lot of work. <laughs> like you would have to really like mix and match it, and yes, trial and error. It is. It's mix and match and trial and error. And then it is a very clinical procedure. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. It is. And um, the edibles are interesting. And again, I was reading about some of the edibles. Mm -hmm. And this young girl had taken a, a, just a 10 milligrams of, uh, and it was CBD edible in a candy form. Mm -hmm. And she said she had an altered state for about two weeks of depression, profound depression. Mm -hmm. And so, oh. it, so basically, when I start researching cannabis, I actually got quite scared of the potency. We just think, oh, cannabis is here, cannabis is there, and I and I like I I just one one of the effects for me from from developing this course is I have a lot of respect for it, mm -hmm. like a great deal of respect for this um, plant. I would ask 
because like I know it affects uh, developed human bodies and young human bodies very differently. So what would like not sound like uh, once a million uh, situations like what happened to that poor girl, but um, some of the trends or like some of the common things that young people can experience. And like what's the age between a developed human being and a still developing human being? That's an excellent question, and I'm really glad you asked it. So males, their brain development is much later, and there's the, most of the Not literature. Surprised. Yeah. <laughs> well, even when you're born, the, the um, girls are more advanced when they're born. The male brain is not nearly as developed when they're born, which is why they're more susceptible to Asperger's, or now it's called neurodiversity. Um, so males develop fully by age 25, and girls are about, um, well, it depends what you're reading, two to three years younger for their full development. But as I'm saying that, there's so many factors mm -hmm. that, that also uh, impact uh, the brain and, um, and, and environment. So as that, so the general rule, let's just say 24, 25 for men and women about three years earlier. And it's, it's say around 25. For, 25 for males. Okay. It's, it's males. Males are more vulnerable than the females because our brain structures are so different for males and females. And males have so much more testosterone than we do, and that really affects their brain. <laughs> we have estrogen, yeah. so we have we and we have testosterone as well, but we have a lot more estrogen. Mm -hmm. um, but here's the issue. So when you have a developing brain and you take something like cannabis, and, and cannabis, if you take just a small amount, you, really have small, no, you don't really have a big effect. Mm -hmm. You think you're fine. You're like, there's no problem. But you actually can, may not be fine. you like, you may not be fine. So uh, way back when, I was a nurse working on psychiatry, and I'll call her um, Anna. She was admitted, she was 15. She just um, smoked one cigarette of cannabis, and she developed a psychotic disorder. And I thought, and then she was admitted to the, the psych unit where I was working. And I thought to myself, how do you know which brain will be susceptible to psychosis and which brain won't? Like, it's, you're kind of playing Russian roulette yeah. with your brain. And here's the irony. About 20 years ago, cannabis was a lot weaker, or, and now it's a lot stronger, or mo I should say more potent, mm -hmm. than it was then. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like she probably didn't even have that much cannabis that she smoked, and it was probably... So like, how does this affect research, though? Like, you just yes. said, like, there are a lot of people with, like, different amounts of receptors. Yes. And, like, people are Genetics, given, like, different... Right? Yeah, like, how does this affect their research? It like? does, yeah, in <laughs> profound ways. Yeah. Because what it means is that... Like, you don't know how are people going to react to it. Like. Th that's right. Um, so, um, and I start the course outline with a story where she's hired to smoke cannabis. <laughs> she gets paid <laughs> to, yes. to, to try the different strains. So well, because we don't have like, like knowledge translation, mm -hmm. uh, to have that um, happen, you have to have lots and lots of articles you go through, yeah. systematic reviews, critical reviews, scoping reviews. And we really just don't have many yet for cannabis. Mm -hmm. But that's what we need. Yeah. Because yeah, that's, what, that's a one-off there. Oh, that's a one-off. But then you put them all together, mm -hmm. and that's where you see the, the patterns or the trend. And we'll, we'll get there, but we're not there uh, yet compared to other topics. So, um, you said, like something you said at the beginning of your answer really piqued my interest. You said even if cannabis doesn't have the high effect associated with THC specifically, even if you don't, um, if you even if you take a small dose or if it doesn't give you that high, that is, uh, it can still affect your body biologically? Yes. What are, like, does it affect the brain? Does it affect yes. our other... Mm -hmm. It affects, okay, so the brain. Um, let's give you an example. So people um, who do a lot of adolescents, right, uh, who do a lot of cannabis, uh, it affects their memory. Now, memory has got many, many, many parts, but memory is kind of important to do well in school. <laughs> oh, and, I mean, kind of. <laughs> kind of, kind of. So me memory is one of the things, because it, it's here, in the prefrontal lobe, uh, where the cannabis uh, gets absorbed. Well, you have receptors here. You have a lot of receptors here. And i um, give you another example. They also have a difficulty um, um, with judgment. 
and we'll do risky behavior. Now, adolescence is a time of risk anyways. <laughs> it's already a vulnerable population to it, risk. It is. Yeah. It is a vulnerable population. And so people who do a lot of cannabis also, in terms of risk, you, you assess the consequence of your risk. So if you're driving, you know, 150 kilometers an hour, it's an icy road, mm -hmm. you might think, this is dangerous. Yeah. But if you really have a lot of cannabis in you, you don't think yes. this might be dangerous. Mm -hmm. And that's the biggest issue, is the consequence of your decision making is impaired when you have a lot of cannabis in you. And I like the way you said, it's already a vulnerable population. Adolescence is a vulnerable population. Now, I like to think about it like, uh, let's say, because it's cannabis, it's a plant. Just think about, you, you plant a plant, just like whatever plant you want to plant. Let's say it's a beanstalk and it's growing, but it's tender until you have the actual fruit when it's hardy, it bears fruits, that's the hardy part. But it's, it's the plant itself is tender until you reach that. Our adolescent brains are tender. And if um, a, a crop gets hailed down, some of it will pick up and continue growing, uh, but a lot of it's damaged. And so that's why the adolescent brain is such a vulnerable brain, because it's a tender brain. It doesn't seem tender. Yeah, no, especially when you have one. <laughs> yes. Not at all. No, and you look great, and you're at, you're fully developed as an adult. Mm -hmm. You have a driver's license, mm -hmm. and then to make things worse, it's no longer criminal. Oh yeah. It's everyone can have it. There's there's a cannabis store. It seems every block. It's not supposed to be by regulation. You're Especially here, we have a lot of cannabis stores oh. here. Yeah. And more in British, British Columbia, more cannabis stores than Starbucks. <laughs> I didn't know that. That's, yeah. a surprise. Yeah, that's a surprise. Yeah, so yeah. when you have that kind of permission, societal permission, why would you think there'd be any danger to it or consequence? I feel like people get used to seeing it so much. Like it becomes normalized. It is normalized. Yeah, yeah it's normalized. I think um, I have another question, but I wanted to ask another question about like young people. What is your take, since it's so normalized and uh, after like legalized, uh, since legalization it's been very normalized and the stigma has lifted somewhat, especially among like people in their 20s, 30s, they're very normal uh, or like very unbiased towards it, right? How do you think that has affected the minor parts? Like we know it's not safe before 25, but the legal or like federal uh, limit, age limit for using cannabis is just 18. And 18 to 25 is already like a risky timeline. But what do you think about people under 18? Like how does legalization has affected their thinking or like their mindset when it comes to cannabis? Uh, yes, it's, it's pretty prevalent. I, I looked at one of the charts um, and the, the use of cannabis at grade seven was there already, people are using it in grade seven. And then by grade 12, some of the schools, when we surveys, about half the class was using cannabis, right? And you can be 17 in grade 12. So when the age 10 to 12, well 12, that's grade seven, right? Um, why are they using cannabis? It's because it's available. <laughs> you don't use something that's not available. Right? So why do peers use it? And then other peers use it because of peer pressure. And you have cannabis available to the peer group. Oh, if that person's doing it and that person's doing it, then it's okay to do it, right? It's, it's, it's fine to do it. So there, there's some sociological factors that really impact the use of cannabis under 18. And I sometimes I think that's what we need to deal with. Not the cannabis per se, but what's going on with these youth that they feel they have to turn to cannabis to have pleasure, to have happiness, to feel that they belong. I wanted to ask you another question. You mentioned availability. Yes. Uh, about if it's not available, then it's not gonna be a problem anyways. And I wanted to ask you about the ways that cannabis or cannabis related products are available to use specifically under the age of 18. Yes, because uh, you can't, in the store, you have yeah. to show your ID. You can't yeah. buy it in the store. No, and, and online you have to show yeah, your ID. ID as well. uh, but I want to say it's so easy not having your ID <laughs> yeah, for 
lots of reasons. Mm -hmm. And uh, the illegal growers uh, have no problem finding people who will sell it for them. And so you have people that sell, uh, and people say this, like I'll, I'll say, how, how long would it take you to find a dealer? And it's like, uh, like five seconds. <laughs> it's, it's, it's on my phone. It's on your phone. Dealer. <laughs> and um, uh, my son teaches high school, and he said, yeah, we know which exactly which students are probably dealing from their lockers. Oh, it, oh, yeah. I mean, it's right in the school, right in the school, right? Oh, yeah. So it goes back to the dealers. Mm -hmm. And uh, as long as the dealers are making money, there are dealers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're everywhere. Would you want to uh, comment on the black market uh, or like the illegal brewers uh, or like growers uh, for like what is the ratio right now in Canada? Even if it is available to you legally, you would seek out the black market. What's the yeah. demographic here? I, 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 I'd hazard a guess on that one. Mm -hmm. um, I'll talk about the anticipation. Mm -hmm. So when it became legal, it was really anticipated that the black market would disappear down under because now we're going to give you great cannabis, right? Yeah. You no, know, really good quality cannabis. And it's legal. It's legal. legal. Go into a Please. store, buy it, get it out like groceries. Yes, exactly. You can buy, you can grow four plants inside, right? Um, you can uh, have 50 grams. You can have 30 grams. If, you, if you're under 18, you can have five grams. You won't be charged. You know, you'll be given the warning. You know, so we, we're so open about it now. We're so helping you. So we'll, we won't have the black market. Well, it hasn't happened because <laughs> the black market, that's their business. That's their income. It's okay, maybe a kind of an underground economy, but it's an economy. And um, they also had loyalty. They, they had loyalty to their customers and back and forth. And, and these are people that are pretty good uh, agriculturalists. I mean, they're, as I said earlier, they're grafting, they're experimenting, they're observing, they're fertilizing, they understand temperature. Um, I'm not sure I showed you this video or not, but, but I was doing the research, I was looking at all these YouTube clips, and this uh, story was this 18-year-old in California, and his parents really wanted him to go to university, and they had a college fund him, for him and everything else. And, he was, he was at that time using a lot of cannabis, and he said, mm, I think I'd just like to grow my own cannabis. <laughs> and uh, it showed pictures of the videos of him and his grow up. Wow, it was awesome. The cleanliness factor, the, the whole, the way he had organized his whole warehouse. I mean, this guy was a born organizer. And I could see why he had a terrific market. And he didn't actually, there is, there is a cannabis university in the States. There, you can go in for four years, you can get a degree in cannabis. Um, but I can see why this guy didn't need to go to a regular university. Yeah. Because he, he, was, he, he had a great income. Yeah, born but a businessman. He was born a businessman. <laughs> but it, cause just seeing the video of it, though, I was pretty impressed with the operation. So that, they still exist. We still have great operations. Why would they shut down, really? I feel like... Before legalization, I mean, in 2018, Canada came out and said, okay, it's totally cool to uh, smoke cannabis now, and it's legal in all different shapes, sizes, and forms. But, like, before that, it, for, like, decades, it was, like, criminalized and it was stigmatized. People who were against it were really against it, and the government were on their side. So I feel like due to that villainization of cannabis and the culture surrounding cannabis, Actually, I feel like this created a culture surrounding cannabis. It did. Who smoked it, why they smoked it, what it represented in different uh, decades. For like, uh, I feel like ca uh, hippies and cannabis culture was like a big thing in the 70s. It was. The Vietnam War going in protest against it. Yes. Uh, so like, how can you make a culture around, like, how can you make such a culture disappear once you say it's, okay, we're taking over now. Yeah, you can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. No, that's right. You can't. No. Okay. So, on the more sociological, like social side, how do you think actively using cannabis can affect a young person's life, fam familiar relationships, you know, friend group? How does it affect them? Yeah, that's an excellent question. Um, probably, and there's probably no right answer for it either, just hypotheses. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I'll go back to my story about Anna. She, I mean, she, had she known she would have had a full-blown psychotic episode from smoking that one 
that's what she said. <laughs> she spoke <laughs> one joint. It could have been many more. I mean, you never know. You never know. Um, so, um, yeah, <laughs> you just never know. Um, yeah, it's, it's a very complex situation. For, I, I mean, it's not only just, um, when I was first devising this course too, I said, we, I need to have opiates in there and cannabis. And, you know, not, not just the cannabis, you have to have some comparisons uh, as well. Um, but this whole drug use for adolescents is, is very challenging. And it's challenging because of the, I'm gonna say it's a biological, I know you want sociological, but because the brain is not fully developed. It's, it's not understanding the consequences of behavior. That's the issue we're dealing with. Um, and we, you kind of touched it. We do have medical cannabis, and uh, it does help people who have chronic pain, uh, young children who have epilepsy, and uh, save people's lives. Uh, it has made a difference um, for oncology patients. I was at a conference on the history of oncology, and uh, a lot of people in the audience were smoking cannabis. I mean, they said they were, you know, for it to manage their symptoms of mm -hmm. cancer. Um, so, could the youth be confused? They're getting messages about the medical cannabis being so good, and yet they're getting messages about how cannabis is bad for the developing brain. Mm -hmm. And then the sociological, their, their friends are using it. They, they seem to be fine. They seem to be okay. You know, so, um, and then one other little thing about cannabis, one other little thing that you should, we should all remember, and that's um, going back to edibles. So, um, someone was telling me that she baked cookies uh, for, with cannabis in them, and her father, who was in his 70s, took a cookie. Terrific, loved it, no effect. So he had a second cookie, and then he had a third cookie. This is, tr this is very common in edibles. N no effect. By the third cookie, you're in an emergency, because you have a huge effect. And, um, so but you don't see... The reason for that? Pardon? Yeah. It's, it's, it's the rate of metabolism. If you, uh, sorry. Go ahead, please, please. I, lo I love hearing your, I love it. She's a, as a student, she's, I love it. <laughs> this course is great, honestly. So when you smoke cannabis, mm -hmm. uh, the cannabinoids that are activated once you light it up, mm -hmm. directly go into your bloodstream and they directly access those uh, receptors. receptors. So it takes effect in like an hour to a couple hours. So mm -hmm. you get it and you have it for like, what, you have it for like three to four hours, right? Yep. Around, yeah. Uh, but if you take an edible, you take a different route to the bloodstream. So mm -hmm. it goes to your stomach first. All the um, different nutrients and all the different chemicals inside are extracted uh, and then into the bloodstream. So it has a very latent effect. Oh. It starts late and then it has a longer effect as well. So it takes eight hours for it to wear mm -hmm. it off once it has started. And it starts late too. Mm -hmm. So when you first eat a cookie, you're like, oh yeah, this is nothing. I don't feel anything. So by the time you're at so the third cookie, three, Okay. You're in trouble. Yeah. You're in trouble. There, another little problem we've had because we're early on in cannabis, you know, research and laws, mm -hmm. is that we think it's alcohol. And it's not <laughs> alcohol. It's not. not. It has a, but because we didn't have the policies or the mm -hmm. procedures in place, people were starting to use those policies and procedures to apply to cannabis use. It's like Which trying to grouping things like this can be addictive, this can be okay. Then it's alcohol. Like, no, it's, it's not. It's not. Very different things. And then I think that's one thing for your own uh, education for the youth is to educate them about the differences about between opiates mm -hmm. and. Um, alcohol and cannabis they're not all the, they're all okay maybe they're all bad for you <laughs> but they're not all the same you know and of course we don't have oh I'm going to this party I'm only having cannabis no I have cannabis and alcohol <laughs> like it's, that's that's the problem mm -hmm. you know and they potentiate each other so it's it's a it's a huge issue so um, <laughs> I remember I'm, I'm from Saskatchewan and my we're driving there and my we're passing these villages and my son said to me so what do they do at night? And I said, well, they probably are playing Scrabble. And um, we got to my aunt's house, and she said, hey, do you want to play Scrabble? <laughs> she loved playing Scrabble. And our youth don't really like to sit at home and play Scrabble. <laughs> that, I mean, that was an old-fashioned mm -hmm. way of you know, interacting. Now, and now we have to have new ways that are happy, make, make them happy, but they, they find the happiness within their social connections where they don't have to be augmented by drugs and alcohol. You actually like Dana in a very perfect like point that I wanted to like make or even ask. 
our like uh, the formats that for like our project that we develop, we try to we have a format called Find Your Passion, mm -hmm. and it's basically a talk series among like young people. We have like six speakers that come in and talk basically just talk about their hobbies and inform viewers, answer basic questions to how they can start doing that hobby. We had a track runner, mm -hmm. we had, nice. yes, we had a girl who did, uh, the e she, she mentioned, from from, yeah, she did earrings, she made earrings from sea glass that she collected oh, on the beach. Oh, I love yes. it. And like, people asked them, one played the guitar, the other did photography, so like, people asked them questions, okay, how can I start doing this? Uh, the people who haven't ha found that niche specific thing that they do like their passion so this was basically a project to get them started on those things because uh, one of the things that we wanted to do when we started like working on this drug barrier in our project we wanted them to have meaningful social bonds with people around them mm -hmm. and specifically their families is very important too that was the one like when you like uh, mentioned that there people don't really enjoy their lives i feel like without those components mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. just doing this project has like raised my like life quality like so much <laughs> I, I like take genuine enjoyment out of it yes mm -hmm. and i feel like a lot of people just don't have that mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. especially during this pandemic yes yeah. so yes. i feel like that is super super important yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> beautiful yeah okay do you want to ask the next question okay so um, how has the process of using a drug illegally for like people under 18 affect the teenager's social circle and their relationship with their family? So like you have to... I kind of asked this question, but maybe you can touch mm -hmm. on like the consequences of it or like well, the cases that you've studied. Yes, it's a family, that's the issue, right? Mm -hmm. So some parents do cannabis with their children, right? They, 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 they did it when they were young and or maybe continue doing it. So there's no consequence. It, but uh, they're cool parents. They're cool, uh, <laughs> and they might, they might even be suppliers, right? Not very helpful, but cool parents. Yeah. So family norms will affect whether mm -hmm. you will do it in the place of residence mm -hmm. or not, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, yeah, uh, and the norms are formed, of course, by religion, mm -hmm. uh, by culture, mm -hmm. uh, by economy. Like what's one of the one, one of the things with stigma in cannabis? You know, guess who was getting arrested? People that were in the lower classes and of a different ethnic uh, background, uh, particularly in the states. That was really obvious mm -hmm. about what they were doing. No, but uh, we had that in the Maritimes as well because Nova Scotia is a high user of cannabis. So, yeah, I think there's so many factors that'll affect the family, whether it's condoned or not condoned. Uh, uh, it's common, like before cannabis, the parents would say, the first drink that you have of alcohol, you have with me. Don't, don't you have alcohol and be driving, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of parenting. Taking them out on their like 21st birthday. Yes. In the US, not here, but like in the US, yeah. Yep. yep. 21st birthday, hey, your first drink, it's not their first drink, but sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yes, that, yeah, that's it. For families that sort of disapprove uh, of cannabis use, especially for like young, ch uh, young children, like under the age of eighteen, do you or like how much do you think that can affect their like relationship with their parents? Well, like yes, um, it depends what degree of guilt they carry <laughs> <laughs> in, the, in the personalities. Like, no, if they never find, <laughs> if they never find out, like just that. Mm, do you think using is it? Uh, do you think using cannabis causes maybe an estrangement in their relationship or can? Potentially. Or the estrangement causes the use? Both, both. both. But, it, but it certainly can. I mean, um, as, as a parent, I know that youth are curious, mm -hmm. you know, and that's why, why they would like to try cannabis or alcohol or cigarettes or whatever, right? There's a curiosity. But we, we do have some families that are that are pretty ignorant, <laughs> uh, and and that's that's being blamed on working too hard and to both parents working too much, mm -hmm. and they're tired. Like they're tired, and it's hard for them to parent fully when their child is an adolescent. Sometimes the adolescents are not too keen to have their parents around either. <laughs> yeah, because you because it's, it's it's a time of individuation. Mm -hmm. Who am I? What's my identity? And if you're always hanging out with your parents constantly, it's, you don't know who you are. That, that was your, your, when you're two or three. That was worked work really great then. But when you get into adolescence, it's no, it's a time for 
for me to stay my be separate, right? And then to be curious. Uh, and so um, the issue then, though, is frequency of cannabis use, right? And um, uh, where and with whom, because what you what, what I would I wouldn't want is for this youth to um, not tell the family or the parents at all, and yet to be seriously engaged in addictive behaviors, doing poorly in school, uh, not looking at consequences of the behaviors, and not having then a social support group, mm -hmm. right? So a group to, because basically all of us have issues or conflicts in our lives, but if we have people around us who love us and support us, or kind of like us and support us, that's all good too. <laughs> tolerate uh, us. It's fine. <laughs> tolerate us. Uh, it makes a difference. Gosh. It makes a difference on e on your honesty, because mm -hmm. I, I love you no matter what. You know, it's your honesty. Where some, if you don't have that, you can't be as honest, even though you've done wrong or feel you've done wrong or whatever. Yeah, I can mess up, and like people will be there for me. Exactly. Yeah, I can mess up. Yeah, Yay. You're like you're human, obviously. Yeah. You mess up. That's right. That's so true. It's like it, 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 it's like with this everything else. It takes two to tangle. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We're on both the parental side of trying to, I don't know, protect and guide your children. Yeah. We're also giving them the support and the space that they need. And also, as an adolescent, even though you're a child, you can't be blamed for the things that uh, mm. you do, you're still having that. Uh, at least trying to keep that relationship or like that support of your parents or like be open to them a little bit at least. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's a, it, it's a complicated time of life. Well, exactly. it, well, it is. Yeah. You know, physiologically, you know, you're still growing, right? And sometimes uh, your nose is bigger than your face, and they, oh, my nose is so big. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> oh, it is. No, I have acne. Yeah, I have acne yeah. because it, everything's growing. It doesn't grow together, mm -hmm. you know. Or you get really sore knees because your legs are too long. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, it, like the body is different, and then uh, different and different. And then you have the hormones, and you have the big gush of estrogen, and then no, then nothing. It seems. <laughs> and so one, one woman told me she said. I'm going through menopause. My grand, my daughter's going through adolescence, and you know, and she says we're experiencing the same behaviors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. About battle of hormones. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's hard. Adolescence is hard. Yeah. It's really hard. It's I, like I, really confusing. It's a confusing time, mm -hmm. and then you've got this. You're you're supposed to find out your your grade by grade uh, ten. You have to make this decision. For some schools, they base your marks on grade eleven, right? Whether you get into that particular program, I mean, you're, you're kind of young. You're you know? too young. Like, like a lot of people are changing their majors in university because, mm -hmm. like, you are allowed to not have an idea about what you actually like. Like, yeah. it's too young to make a decision about. Yeah. It. Everyone should take like a couple gap years. <laughs> Just yeah. like calm down, stop, mm -hmm. think. So I really like yeah, it. totally. Yeah. yeah, and so I, I get why people turn to cannabis, mm -hmm. but I think it's um, you have to be careful what you're turning to. Yeah, I mean, we all have the. It's like escapism too. Like we want yes. to, we want to. We all have problems. We all have like all these. We have due dates, and then we have. If you're older, you have bills, and mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you have tuition. You have things that yeah. you need to take care of. People who depend on you. You have responsibilities, and we all want to escape sometimes. Like just turn it off. Yeah, turn it off. Escape, and I feel like cannabis. A lot of young people, and even like people in their twenties, use it as like an escape. Mm -hmm. Uh, that because that hole that like need needs to be filled with something something yeah. and cannabis seems to be the only achievable option or like available option to a lot of people and like that might be due to a lack of meaningful social bonds mm -hmm. that might be due to a lack of hobbies or interests yeah, like people who love you like you mm -hmm. tolerate yeah <laughs> for, yeah like, your hobbies yeah. and stuff yeah yeah I mean as as an extreme reader. <laughs> Because all I do with my free time is like reading. Mm -hmm. So like, I know that that hole can be filled with some other things as well. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. I just, I yeah, with this project, we just wanted to be able to show people mm -hmm. that you can't do that. Mm -hmm. well, Absolutely. We'll try our best. Yes, <laughs> okay. yes. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to touch on the pandemic? Actually, yeah. Like, uh, we were making a lot of research about like how the pandemic affected youth, and like we feel like very recent papers like 2020 2021 mm -hmm. which like, is great yeah which is great like but it says like uh, anxiety depression and stress like they're skyrocketing yes like, they are how does it affect people's relationships with 
cannabis. And yes. Like, what was going on? You're there? taking more. <laughs> they are taking more. Yes. As always, it's more. No it's less. more. The sales are right up. As is anxiety and depressions mm -hmm. right up. So they're taking the cannabis to bring down their, de their let's say their depression or the anxiety. Let's just say anxiety. So there are about 20 interventions for anxiety, like mm -hmm. mindfulness, meditation, even um, yoga, walking in nature, you know, all of those. There's so many things you can do. Or you can take cannabis. <laughs> yeah, it's so much easier. It's so much easier. <laughs> but, but when I think about anxiety, if you, if you went into counseling for anxiety, mm -hmm. Your, your, your therapist would work with you on all these interventions mm -hmm. to, to help relax you. And, uh, they were in cannabis? No. Okay. <laughs> no, they wouldn't include cannabis. But, but it's, it's so interesting that there's so many things you can do. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do cannabis. Yeah, like it, 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 I feel like it kind of loops. You know, like it's it does. It's how you fill that how, like, gap. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So isolation and loneliness. It is hard. But it's but like, hard. Especially with COVID, it's hard. It is because the pandemic has has um, made us more lonely because the very public health measures uh, distancing, like we're are distancing. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, wearing the mask. You know, mm -hmm. you don't see the whole face. There's only mm -hmm. half of you that I see, and, and there's so much in your face that communicates to me. Mm -hmm. You know, the smile particularly. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, in the hospitals at, at, at times there were no visitors like none people were dying alone alone mm -hmm. and now there, then there was one visitor ne now still it's about one <laughs> right now mm -hmm. uh, so no social contact from people that are really meaningful to you mm -hmm. so there's so many distancing measures that um, or right now we have two families in Alberta but not bigger than 10 or two, co two co cohorts sorry mm -hmm. and not bigger than 10 so some families are 10 so there's no <laughs> you know if you follow the rules so the pandemic is all about distancing, and distancing uh, it, for a human that is, humans are so social human beings. We want to be with others. And you know the history, right? The history yeah. of loneliness, mm -hmm. that we, it, you, it kills you. And if you're not have, with others. So it's, it's huge. The pandemic has a huge impact on loneliness and cannabis use and alcohol use. <laughs> and yeah. all the bad things. And opiates. <laughs> yeah. Opiates are, are, are so high. I, you know, I feel embarrassed with this textbook I wrote. I have a section on opiates, mm -hmm. and how, I have stats for how, for how many people die. Well, the stats, what I have, and what, what the, what's, what's happening are like miles apart, or mm -hmm. the kilometers apart, sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, like, it's really just sword. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of like, people like developing addiction. Like, it's not just alcohol. It's like, I read about gaming, you know, like, yes. people are trying to find something. Yeah. To fill that gap. Yeah. I started watching anime during the quarantine. That was my yes. yes. I was like, let me just delve into this world of anime. Um, I like she mentioned something like the history of uh, loneliness. It's basically like behaviorally ingrained mm -hmm. in our brains, like back from when we used to like live in groups of like tribes, mm -hmm. where you didn't, if you didn't provide something, or like if you didn't provide something to the group, and you acted by yourself, you were not cooperative with them, you were basically shunned from the group and which means death if you're living mm -hmm. in a in the wilderness sort of basically. Mm -hmm. Uh so like it was socially like ingrained in our brains that you need I other people. To, yeah, you need, I have to you be need, in a group. <laughs> yeah, you need to be in a group. Someone's gonna supply the food, someone's gonna supply the fire mm -hmm. and then we're gonna work together and then we're gonna survive. It's like human beings, no matter mm -hmm. how edgy or emo you think you are, yeah. that you like, prefer I'm lonely like, to I'm like every else. And I'm yeah. like, I have no problem with being alone mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. but like in the so pandemic, queen. <laughs> you know, like, but in the pandemic, even I was like, wow, maybe like some human interaction <laughs> can be nice. Yeah, because like it kind of gets to you after a mm -hmm. point. It's not like, like it's because it's forbidden, you're like, oh my God, I want to see people. Yes. <laughs> like, but yes. I feel like, yeah, the pandemic made introverts into extroverts. No. Yeah. Not extroverts. Not extroverts, but some like human seeking, interaction is Seeking yes. human interaction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I wanted to, I know this is like a whole other topic in itself, but like when it comes to, especially the black market and like targeting, especially young children, I want to talk about vaping. Oh, Let's vaping, yes. Um, Wow, so convenient. <laughs> I think vaping is so convenient, right? Yeah. And um, I love that you're not supposed to be using cannabis while you drive. And I, I said to you earlier that, you know, here you're parked and then, you know, how the vape, you can see the vape 
cloud come out of the tr window. <laughs> you know, like it's it's so distinct, yeah. you know. And uh, then when we did, we were able to go be at university. I would walk into university, and the man was vaping always at the same place outside of Eka every day. <laughs> you know, getting the big cloud uh, around him. So. Um, it's also, uh, they've tried to make it very attractive. The va vaping pen, mm -hmm. and then they have different flavors. A di well, I, I am very, I, ha I have a problem with the flavors. Yes. <laughs> because the flavor blue raspberry have not has not been marketed to anyone over the age of 13. You can't, you know. I feel like no adult is like seeking raspberry. <laughs> blue raspberry? Yeah. Yeah. No adult is seeking blue raspberry flavor. That's for kids. And that is, I can't believe there are such vaping, like th there are such flavors, it's such flagrant targets uh, of like advertisement. It's obviously children. Mm -hmm. And I, I have no idea how it's not flagged, how it's not illegal right now, but yeah. Are there any regulations for those? They are, they've, they've now regulated them, yeah. the mm -hmm. flavors. But it's still in the States, you can get the flavors. Uh, I must say the creative writing for some of these like blue raspberry, yeah. it's gorgeous. It like, sounds um, fun. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, and that's another if problem. You're 13. Yeah, yeah it, it is. is. I mean, that's part of the that's part of the marketing, yeah. right? I mean, it kind of sounds like a lollipop. You know? Yeah, it's it so does. Sinister. It is so sinister. I don't know. Yeah. No. Yeah. Don't. Yeah. Yeah. So and it's uh, handy. People carry them in their purses. You know, it's contained. You don't have to light up. Mm -hmm. You you know. Um, yeah, and it looks cool. Uh, yeah. It looks cool. I actually, easy access. I like mentioned it to like the places uh, that people will be using their like vapes, and people will be vaping. Amusement. I like, ma again, mentioned this to you, but like amusement park, yep. where we're going on that very like toll ride. It's basically, it's basically this long stick where you sit on one end and it takes you up there. Mm -hmm. People were like leaving their bags, their shoes, their like glasses everything so that it doesn't fall off this is like very very tall and everyone basically leaving everything on the platform ready to go and i look up and i see this like kid strapped in with a face and he's just vaping there yeah. that's the priority yeah yeah totally perfect story he, he wanted to be high while high <laughs> that's a great way yeah. to describe it yes high well high so professor finally <laughs> What is the one thing you wish young people knew about cannabis? I would like them to know that the very best thing they could do is find a friend who's not using cannabis, a best friend, and that will help them a lot when they're tempted. That is good advice on all fronts of life, of like having that best friend to keep you straight. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you okay. so, so much. Thank oh, you great. So much. Okay. It was lovely meeting you. Yeah.